Okay, good morning. Welcome to my stream. It's a Wednesday morning and we're getting ready to go investigate uh, poisons. Let me switch this over. There we go. Pull up my chat window and let's dig in. So we just finished pushing up a bunch of changes uh, related to magic spells. We added spell books that we can read and learn spells from. Um, it looks like we, we learn one spell at a time from a book. That's fine. That's a, that's a good choice. Um, and now we're going to look at poisoning. So get on. Just a quick check here. Yep. So strength potion, zap spell, mana restore potions. Potion does restore over time. And then there's the spell book. Okay, perfect. <coughs> so let's dig in. Putting this all together. Poison. Uh, it's been a long road a few chapters of making a generic effects system. Before we move back to the fun part of finishing our game, maps and monsters. Okay, is that the fun part? I guess playing around with the stuff is good. Oh, I just lost my strength. That's fine. I have god mode turned on, so I'm not worried about equipment and stuff. Um, it would be good to put all this together combined with one new small system to show what we've achieved. To that end, we're going to add two types of poison, a damage over time, dot, and a slowing venom. We'll make it available as an unfortunate poison potion choice, which will become useful in the future. An attack scroll, a spell, and as something spiders can inflict upon their victims. Oh, a slowing, the slowing venom is, is what they're referring to, okay. So it's an unfortunate poison, potion choice, and text scroll a spell and something spiders can do. All right. The amazing part is that now we have a unified system. This really isn't too hard. Slow hate. Should this be haste? And damage over time effects. We'll start by making two new components to represent the effects. So we're going to have a slow and a damage over time. Okay. this. Add two more here and pub struct slow. Which takes an F32, sorry, initiative penalty, and then a pub struct damage over time, which takes an I32. Okay. And we add that to main. Uh, slow for this one and then damage over time sort boom oh gs try again there we go and then in the um, save load system um we're gonna move mode i'll switch there slow damage over time, comma, there we go, okay. Now, next we'll open Raw's Raw Master to add these as loadable effect types. Oops, this didn't work. Oh, register. There it is, okay, now they're right. Okay, uh, raw master. There we go. And we're gonna add, we have an identify. So let's add slow. And it has the initiative. I and I, G I A T I V E. One not parsed, colon colon F32. What else is in there? Unwrap. And then damage over time. Oops. D A M A G E over time is going to be E B, E B with damage over time, damage effect dot one dot parse. Call, call I thirty two. Right? 
Oop, and I missed the uh, brackets on the unwrap. Here and here. And save those. That doesn't work. Effect EFFECT. -E Okay, good. So that wasn't too bad. <clears throat> so now slow and damage over time are recognized as effects in the various raw file entries it can have their, their components applied. Next up, we need to teach the effect system to apply it. We'll start in effects to add a new effect. So we have a slow and a damage over time. Um, this is in mod effects. There we go. So we add a slow here. And a damage. Oops. Damage. Okay. In the same file, we need to indicate that they apply to entities. So, if tile effect to entities. I guess we could just add it here. Effect type. Slow or effect type damage over time. Ooh, Danish codes. Will knowing C have any advantage for learning Rust? And Karina Karina says, I think so. Um, I, I think so too. I mean, it, you, you basically, if you know C, this is Rust is a very C like language. Um, what you're going to be. A lot of it is there. The only thing that's, uh, the significant thing that's missing in Rust is inheritance. So you won't be able to create structure trees of, sorry, class trees, right? You can create um, has a relationships, but you can't create is a relationships, if that makes sense. Um, pum, 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 pum. So we did this and we also need the routing table in effect entity to direct them correctly. Okay. So that's just here and we're going to add a, two more damage types. So slow and damage over time and they both call into damage. Okay. Uh, in turn, this requires that we create two new functions. So in it affects damage, we have to write slow and damage over time. So let's see how these all work. Let's do a quick cargo check. That fails. Why? Oh, because I forgot the dots here. And effect type. What's over here? Oh, we don't have slow and we don't have. Um, okay, so let's add those. So in our damage code, let's pub fun slow. Actually, we can just copy this line here right? and just rename it slow. Boom. Uh, let's see if let effect type slow. It's too bad we have to we have to do that everywhere, right? I mean, this one attribute effect has to destructure it here. This has to destructure this here. It's too bad we can't just pass in the right thing. But I guess you know you got to do it somewhere. You got to destructure somewhere, right? Uh, so then it's ECS create entity. Right, so there's the slow, and then we have a duration, and it's always five turns. So that's that's got to be something that needs to change, right, to make it completely configurable. Name, name, 
load to string else name name hasted <laughs> to string that's a funny word hasted marked simple marker so, is me right and then build okay so that, this builds the the full thing although it looks like I'm still missing something No, nope, that worked. Okay. So if I, I just want to come back here because I don't like the double name thing here. We can just do a single name like this and put the else inside. Oops. Like that. Okay, I like that a little bit better. And then we're going to add damage over time. Pub fun damage over time. Oh. Just do this. It has the exact same function signature. It'd be nice to make that a trait. We could just call it but if let effect. Type. So we're going to create a new entity here, which is going to be a status effect. And with the damage over time component. And again, the duration is going to be five turns. which should, we, we need to maybe, for a full game, we would make that a little, a little more configurable. And then marked, simple marker, serialize me, build. There we go. Uh, target. Okay, so that built. You'll notice that both of these are similar to confusion. They apply a status effect. Now we need to handle the effects in the triggers file. Okay, in the event trigger function. Okay. Um, so I guess it doesn't matter where it goes. Wind spells, damage, confusion. Maybe we'll just put it after confusion. So there's the initiative penalty. Oops. Just type that one. I and I. T I A T I V E. And then what else goes in there? The targets.clone. And then did something is true. Okay. Penalty with a Y. Okay, that's good. And then we're going to add damage over time. Wow. And effect. Do 
that again. Damage is damage dot damage. And targets claw. And that's adding the effect and then it did something. Nope, didn't like that. Effect type. Okay, that's clean. Finally, we need the status effects to have their way with the victim. First, the slow effect makes sense to handle in the encumbrance system. Right after we handle attribute effects, add this. Okay. So encumbrance. Right after we handle attribute effects. So I guess just before this, apply the data to the pools. Total up, haste and slow. Uh, if to update contains key, there's target. Let totals is equal to update get mod status target. Unwrap. And then totals dot initiative. And then we're going to have to add the um, slow into this list, right? Where else is it going to get slowed from? Because that doesn't exist here, right? We just we just created it. Um, pum 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 pum. Yeah, I think we're going to have to add that here, right? So slow. And then we're going to do a read, storage, tick A, slow. And then we're going to destructor it with slowed. I think that's what we need to do. Status is. And, oh, join is a function that we need to call. There we go. Okay, so I cleaned that up. We'll add damage over time support to the duration tick. It could be a separate system, but we're already iterating over the state effects, status effects at the right time. Oh, Togglebit, thank you for the raid. Thank you very much for the raid and welcome raiders. Uh, we are adding poisons and um, other slowness effects to our roguelike game. It's a fun little roguelike and hopefully uh, hopefully we can make our own someday. Um, so we're adding damage over time support to the duration tick. All right take care toggle bit thanks again. And Noctu thank you for the follow. Um, right so we're going to extend the duration check in the initiative system to include it. Okay, so let's pull up the initiative system, which looks like this right now, and we're gonna add damage over time to the bottom. Negative IQ viewer, <laughs> thank you for the follow. Uh, damage over time. I like your name. And this will just be, uh, we, what are we going to call it here? When we destructure it, it just dots. Okay. Very good. And then we're going to handle durations in the code down here somewhere. We just have to figure out where. Hassan Ashkar, thank you for the follow. Oh, and Kanto do drop off. Kanto do drop off? Maybe? Thank you also. Um, so, oh, here's handle durations right here. So we already handled the durations. We just need to handle the dots as well. So this says use create effects. Colon, colon, star there. And then we're going to add, we're checking to see if the entity is alive before we do anything. 
So it's a little different because we can see the duration turns minus equals one and then there's the dot effect right there. I'm not sure if we ha actually have is alive anywhere. Oh, we do. Okay, we made it a long time ago though. Okay, so we already checked that. Duration turns minus one, and then we're gonna if let some dot dots get effect entity. So we're gonna add the effect of a damage dot here. But it's saying it's coming from nowhere. Selective duplicate. Thank you for the follow. Selective Duplicate says, I started this tutorial and dropped off of it. I don't know why I find game dev comparatively more challenging. Um, the problem with game dev, I mean, going through this, this tutorial is, is kind of sweet because all the design is already taken care of. And all we're doing is writing the code and learning how to do the code part. I think for game dev, the design overwhelms the, the kind of code that you're going to be writing. So I wouldn't stream game dev. I know some people do. And more power to them, but I don't have that capability. I'd have to sit there and design the whole thing, and that doesn't make for a very interesting stream. And Root, D, Root DNB says, hi, can I ask, are you going through some sort of a tutorial? I am. This tutorial, I'll, I'll put the, uh, the link in the chat, basically goes from an empty cargo workspace to through to making a full-fledged roguelike game. So we got a little roguelike game run here running in the browser. It also works standalone. I just do it in the browser to make my stream setup a little easier. Um, but we can build standalone and we can also, we also have these little tooltips. So we're making a, a roguelike and we basically did this from scratch. So it's a really, really good tutorial if you want to learn Rust, if you want to learn how entity component systems work. And if you want to learn how to make a game, damage amount dot damage. So I'm just right here doing this code. Selected duplicate says, yeah, the design decision stuff, also graphics and math, which I really suck at. Yeah, well, that's that's why I'm doing <laughs> that's why I'm doing a, a text-based roguelike because I also suck at graphics. <clears throat> yep, no problem. Targets, single, target, status, target. So that's those two, and then that's the effect. And then we still do durations over turn, uh, duration that turns less than one to, to trigger the equipment changed and delete the entity that handled this. Okay. All right, so that builds. So there's one new concept in that code is alive. Status effects might outlive their target, so we only want to apply them if that target is still a valid entity. Otherwise, the game will crash. Okay. So now we're going to add a bunch of items, and that is in our raws spawns. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but Esteno, thank you for the follow. All right, so we're going to do, we're going to add pose, Poison Potion, Slow Potion, and Haste Potion. And let me just add these to the top. This is not code, so I'm not, not typing this in. Code I'll type in, but these things I will not. And then these go into items. The items section, the rest of it. So we'll just add those to the top here. Um, copy. copy to here and paste these guys in okay oops and then we'll just shift these over so they're all in the same indentation level and they all look like potions they all look purple this one has the damage over time effect which is the poison this one has the slow effect which is the slow potion and then we have a haste potion which has a negative two if, um, slowness Okay, and then we need to test these out somehow. Notice that we've given them really high spawn chances. That's what this weight is. 
weight is not how heavy they are. The weight is how often they get spawned. We'll correct that once we know they work. If you cargo run now, you'll find the potions in the woods and they will damage, haste, slow you as you'd expect. Our generic potion enemy is correctly obfuscating new potions, right? Our slow damage over time effects are applying to self-used items. We can make these effects functions for potions just by adding the spawn set adjacent file now. You could even use negative damage for a heal over time effect. All right, so let's save this. Let's build the wasm. And um, let's give it a go. Let's see if the new potion effects will, uh, will work. We have had to debug things over time. So I wouldn't be surprised if I messed something up or if the tutorial messed something up. Um, okay, so let's refresh. Uh, let's go into God mode so we don't die. Let's reveal the map. This, oh, this is a cheating menu um, that we added a few chapters ago. Okay, so we just need to look for... I'm going to ignore the wolf. We're going to look for this. This is a viscous yellow potion. So let's just let's try uh, indiscriminately drinking it. Shift three. And that's a damage over time. Uh, again, there's no message that says you drank it, you've been, you've been poisoned. And now, hopefully this number will go down. Oh, I got a wolf attacking me as well, don't I? It's, hmm. So I was not damaged. My health did not change. That's unfortunate. That's very unfortunate. Let's pick this one up. It's a glowing violet potion. Now I'm hasted. There's another haste potion. There's a poison potion. Okay, I want to try this poison potion again. So shift four. Damage over time. So this health should go to... Oh, you know what? I'm resting. So resting was canceling out the heal. Let's hope that that was the bug. No? Hmm. Okay, that's unfortunate. We have a little bug. Uh, selective Duplicate says, The person behind the tutorial and the book, Hands on Rust, in my opinion, is an excellent writer. I have the book and his writing is so polished. I I agree. You're not wrong. He's, uh, he's very good at... Uh, uh, teaching concepts and explaining them well. Um, Herbert Wolverton. Um, and let me just, he goes by bracket. Let me just throw his Patreon up here in case people are interested in helping him out. Okay, so we have a bug where we're, we're not, that's a zap. Let's go back to the potion, the poison. Here's damage over time. So we should be inflicting a damage over time, and we're not. The design look and feel is very much similar to the Cataclysm DDA. I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah. Oh, okay, they have different tile sets. Kevin Grenade. Interesting. Um, yeah, I'm not familiar with this, but I'll check it out. Thank you. All right, so we have the damage over time. And we are applying... Oh, oh this just affects the duration. Where did we put in... Oh, and this is the slowness. We added this, but we didn't add taking damage. Okay, so we're missing we're missing something up. We're missing something somewhere which actually this inserts the effect of damage over time. But where are we taking it into account and actually applying the damage? Here 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 it is. This is where we're adding the damage. Okay. So let's take a look at that code. Root DMV says, what kind of editor IDE are you using? I am just using NeoVim version 0.6.1 in a text window. I'm on a Mac. I'm not on uh, Windows or, or Linux or anything like that. I'm just on a Mac 
doing Mac-y things. And I set it up this way just to make it easier to stream. Um, so let's take a look at this code here. This is the initiative system where we should be inserting a damage effect of a certain amount of damage. And there it is. Let's, let's just add a console log here to take a look at what's going on. Oh, thank you, Root, for the follow. Uh, format, adding a damage effect for this much, dot damage. Okay, and then let's build that and see what's going on. Let this check. Um, because there should be something in our processing code which will handle the damage. Once the damage effect is is hit onto the target, now maybe the target's wrong. Maybe I got that wrong. Maybe that's what the bug is. I can't test haste, right? I don't know if I'm going faster or slower than other creatures. All right, let's refresh. Um, reveal, and now let's look for potions. There's something. Let's drink it, shift three. That's hasted, okay. Oily brown is damage over time, okay. So now there's adding a damage effect for two. So I should have taken two damage, right? And there's another one. Yeah, so five damage, sorry, two damage five times was being inserted. But does that mean our, where's the damage handled? Right, because I know we handle damage. The hunger system effect adds a damage effect. Yeah, maybe maybe it's the um, oh, this is just this is just the trigger. Okay, here's inflict damage. So let's take a look at that code. So we need to just print out. Oh, I'm in God mode. That's why. I'm in God mode. So I can't test that out if I'm in God mode. Let's restart. And not turn on God mode. So let's just teleport, reveal. And let's hope we get... Three. That's... I'm slowed. Shift three. I'm hasted and slowed at the same time. Shift three. There we go. Damage over. Oh, okay. Now we go. We got it. 18, 16, 14, 12, 10. Very good. Okay. And then the dot disappears and then we're back and we bleed the entire way. Okay. Okay. So that's working. Um, so let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that console log message. Which was where? Here it is. And then we can, uh, let's commit these changes before we do anything else. Because we did all this. Okay, so git add source and logs. Right, git commit. Poison potion, haste, slow potion. Okay. So now to show off the system, let's make a scroll of web and a rod of venom. Okay. I guess these are items. So let's just stick those in here as we do. Um, and we'll have to add those Okay, we're gonna change those back to threes and then make these 100s, okay. So it becomes a three, three, and a three, and then we can just put these in here. 
and then we'll get a, red, a web scroll and a venom rod. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. If we cargo run now and find a new scroll and rod, we can inflict poison and area effect slowness, which is basically a web, on our unsuspecting victims. Once again, we've proven the system to be pretty flexible. Uh, you can also apply the new effects to scrolls and rods, and the naming system continues to work. The effects apply to both area of effect and single target victims. To continue demonstrating out flexible, maybe our flexible system, effect systems, we'll add two new spells, Venom and Web, and a couple of books from which to learn them. Arachnophilia 101 and Venom 101. All right, let's see if we can uh, check out the Web's rod and the... Let's go find a rod really quick. There's a couple there. So an unidentified rod. Let's find a victim for it. Oops. Baba, thank you for the follow. Um, and we don't have any creatures to fight. Okay, let's go to the next level. There we go. Okay, so if I, I shift three and hit G here, it's a rod of venom. Hopefully it inflicted damage on him. Oh, he does have a damage over time. Okay, four, three. You can see him getting hit and bleeding and then dies in one hit. Yeah, the only thing that's missing here now is the, um, the log messages saying what's going on. <clears throat> but we have a rod of venom identified. Excuse me. <clears throat> there we go. Um, I guess we should try to look for... What was the other thing we added? I've already forgotten. The scroll. The web scroll. Which should be this thing here. Shift 4. Oh, I got slowed. Okay, so that was a... Yeah. Yeah, that worked. I was in the target range of the slow. So I got I got hit with the slow effect. So we know that works now. All right. So those are there. I don't need to commit those changes. That was just modifying a few things there. Let's switch the, um, the, the spawn rate down again. There we go. And then we're going to add a web and venom in the spell section. Oh, that's right here. So let's copy these lines. There's web and venom. And then we'll add a book just like the beginner's magic book. So these go, this goes in the items section, right here. Oops, just trying to shift this over like that. And then we have to add our two lines for spawn table okay and then once again if you cargo run the project you can run around learning these spells and inflict them upon your foes okay let's try that and then we're going to go to more effect triggers The testing we've done in this chapter section has shown us the power of what we've built. A single system can provide effects for items and spells, supporting multiple target types, and additional effects on top of them. That's really great and shows off what you can do with an ECS and a messaging system on top. It seems like to really put the cherry on top of the system, there are two more circumstances in which effects should fire. As proc effects after a weapon hits, so a dagger of venom might poison a target, and a special abilities for enemies. I promised you we're getting there. Not quite yet, though. Okay. So. Root DNB says, I just quickly looked through this 
tutorial and it looks seriously amazing. Hopefully when I have spare time someday, I can go through it as well. Also, I never worked with Rust before, so even that would be cool to learn. Yeah, um, it is, it is, I mean, you should like go through like the basics of Rust first, maybe the first couple of chapters, just so you, you have a basic understanding of, of how Rust is. And then jumping into this tutorial does expand. I mean, learning a concept is one thing, but actually using a concept in a real thing uh, really helps you learn. And that's that's what this has been doing for me is I've seen it, the Rust code in action and seeing how it behaves. Um, just knowing, okay, you can do this with enums is one thing, but then seeing how enums get used that way is another. So it, that's that's what's been helpful for me. I'm also doing streaming this Crafting Interpreters um, book every other week. I do this one, and what we're doing is porting the Java code to Rust. So I'm trying to learn Rust that way by looking at the way it was built in Java and saying, okay, how should this be done in Rust? And um, that's been an interesting journey too, mostly because I've been tripping over my own feet with that. Um, okay, so we should be able to find spell books. Let's go into, oh, they're all over the place. So I don't have to reveal the map. I can just pick one up. There's Venom 101. If I hit Shift 3, I have a Venom spell now that I can cast, and it has two costs, two mana. That's also Venom 101. I guess I can, I can drop that. Let's find the other spell book. That's also Venom 101. Let's find Arachnophilia. There it is. If I hit Shift 3, now I have Web, and it also costs 2 to cast. So let's find an enemy. There's Bandit. Let's cast um, Shift 1. No, Control 1. Control 1. And then here. So he's got a dot effect on him, and then I can slow him down using Web. Control 2. There. That was weird. I wonder why so many things happened. Oh, and then he died. So I picked up a dagger. And a shield. And a leather armor. And leather boots. Wow, nice. Uh, Root DNB says, what sort of font character set is this game using? Is it some custom font? It is, and, and don't, don't apologize for asking questions. Asking questions is how I learn too. Um, code page, wow, 437. There we go. It's this character set. Um, and it's built into the RLTK crate. Um, let's take a look at the GUI code real quick. Uh, CP 437. So there's this function here called 2CP437, which stands, you know, converting a, a character from this Unicode into this code page. And it's used throughout. And here's 2CP437 for plus sign, for example, and it just basically prints, uses this. This is an old IBM PC character font um, that the original roguelikes were made with or the olden days roguelikes were made with. So it's trying to evoke that same kind of a feeling of using a an old IBM PC. Um, you bet, no problem. So damage procs, let's start with the proc effects on weapons. Thinking about it, weapon procs can either affect the target or the caster. So proc, just to divert for a second, proc stands for procedure. So a procedure that would occur once a, a, an event happens. So if you add a proc to a weapon, right, you're saying if this weapon attacks something, call this other procedure. Um, and it's, that's going to be different in the ECS, obviously, but they're still called proc effects. So weapon procs, procedure that calls on a weapon that gets called by a weapon when it hits something can either affect the target or the caster. You might have a sword that heals you when you hit something, for example, or you might want to apply damage over time to the target with your extra sharp sword. They shouldn't always proc, meaning they shouldn't always be triggered. 
So there needs to be a chance, which could be 100%, for it to happen. And they need to have an effect, which can conveniently use the effect system we've painstakingly defined. Let's put this together in Spawns.json in a dagger of venom. Okay. Before I do that, let's uh, fix the the weights on these guys and commit these changes. Yeah, all we did was modify that. So add raws. Yeah. It's basically get add, uh, commit. Um, why did that change? It didn't. Okay, added spell books for web and uh, haste. Okay. Very good. Okay, so let's add our dagger of venom. And I guess it's just an item, so we can put it in the items section. It has a dot of two. So it's got a proc target, target, proc effects, damage over time, and a proc chance of 0.5. Okay, so that's what's new here. Initiative penalty is minus one. To make this, I copy pasted a basic dagger and gave it a hit damage initiative bonus. Oh yeah, so it's got a plus one base damage and it's got a hit bonus of one. Then I added some new fields, proc chance, proc target, and proc effects. The effect system can take care of the effects with a little bit of help. First, we need to extend the weapon structure. Right, so now we have to modify the code that reads the JSON file in. Um, item structs. So this is, this is how the JSON gets read in. And we have under weapon, here it is down here. We have pub proc chance. Proc target and proc effects. Okay, now we'll add these fields to the melee weapon component type. Right. Just doing a quick check here. Hello, there we go. And then components. Melee, there it is, melee weapon. And we're gonna add pub proc chance and pub proc target. I guess we don't have to add the effects because the effects get generated when the weapon hits. We also need to instantiate that data when we're reading about the weapon. We can extend the weapon section of spawn named item quite easily, okay. This should blow up here. Plutonon, thank you for the follow. Um, yep, so we're missing proc chance and proc target. Oh, and Kairos, thank you for the follow as well. So proc chance is going to be the weapon. All right, um, proc chance. So we're just converting it from the JSON uh, into uh, the actual weapon that we're spawning. And then this has a quickness thing, which we don't have. I think this must be something from a future thing. Um, cause I'm not, wep, wep, weapon attribute quickness doesn't exist. Let me take a quick look here in the components. Pretty sure. There is quickness. Oh, okay. So this must be something, hmm. Maybe I missed it in going through the tutorial before, but I'll add it now, weapon.
everything else is just weapon attribute. I must have missed it because we added this a long time ago, I think. Watch out, 1319 says hi. Hi. How are you? So EB, EB with weapon and then Flitzum proc effects equals and? This must be a typo. I think that's a typo. Oh, and watch out. Thank you. Thank you for the follow. Apply effects. Prop effects. EB. Okay. Let's see if this even builds. Um, and I'm going to take a quick look at the code here for chapter 66 in Raw's Raw Master. All the code for this book is online. So whenever we've had problems building, I've taken a peek at what the code looks like. Um, I'm looking at the wrong file here. This Raw's directory, and then we're in Raw Master. And we're going to look for spawn named item. Which is where? Let's apply effects. Here we are. Spawn named item. Oh no, it's got an equal ampersand. What does that do? I'm not familiar with that syntax. Oh! <laughs> Duh. That. That's what that is. I was reading this as a single um, single operator, equal ampersand. But it's equal ampersand we weapon proc effects. I got it now. I think if I leave this out, it's going to complain. My rust is going to complain. I don't know why that took me so long to figure out. Oh, didn't like this. Oh, because where are we? In the melee combat system, we have to modify the code there as well. So let's just do that real quick. Fortunately, it's pretty straightforward to add those. Okay, so here we are. What? Um, okay, I'm a little... Oh, it needs to be mutt. Okay, I missed that. See, it kind of snuck it in there. But that needs now to be a mutt. Oh! Here's the, here's the, the, this part of it. And that's what I did. Okay, that's what I did. I changed it so we don't have to do it this way with a mutt. Ah, I missed that. Okay. So I did it. I just did it differently. How did I miss that? Okay. So yeah, this needs to be ampersand. Okay. That makes more sense. That's not an operator. That's two operators. Okay. So we did that. So where we find the wielded weapon, we also need to store the entity so we have access to the effects component. What does this mean? Where we find the wielded weapon, we also need to store the entity. Um. I'm missing something here. Where does this code go? Because we're setting this weapon entity value. Then where do we use that? Oh, it's down here. Okay. So after add effect for a successful fit, a successful hit, we add the weapon procking. Okay, so we have to look for this code here. Um, what file is that in? Is that an effects damage, maybe? No? I'm looking for this line here. 
Oh, maybe that line doesn't exist yet. This is inflict damage, heal damage, restore damage, death, and confusion attribute effect. No, damage over time. No. So where does this go? Um, pom 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 pom. After add effect for successful hit, we add in the weapon proccing. Oh, okay. So melee combat system. Here we go. Right, this makes sense, right? So here's where we're we're in the melee combat system, right? And we're adding the effect of damage. So where we find the wielded weapon, we also need to store the entity so we have access to the effects components. So that must be up here. That's the armor. Here we go, here we go. This is where we find the, so let me just put a comment here. Find the wielded weapon. Just put a comment like that. And then we can just say, let mutt weapon entity. Um, option entity is none. And then we're gonna pull this in here. Weapon, I'm gonna put an underscore just so I can read it better, entity. And this is going to be entities like that, right? Then wielded owner is blah, blah, blah. And is wield slot, blah, blah, blah. There's the weapon info. And then we'll just say weapon entity is some weapon entity. Oh, I see why I didn't put the underscore there. Ah. Uh, I'm going to say wielder. Right? I like that better. Okay, and then down after we add the effect, so that's all the way down here. We add the effect, we log entries push, something hits something for something HP, then here we'll do the proc effects. Okay, so self is one of the options for the effect targets, so it becomes the target targets single, which is the target entity else. It's going to be targets single target wants may wants melee target. All right, so the effect target is either going to be oops, let's put the extra colon there. So if, if the effect is affecting the self, meaning the holder of the weapon, then the target of the proc is going to be the entity that's holding the weapon. Otherwise, it's going to be the target of the the target is going to be the entity that the weapon is attacking. And it will add an effect. Um, what's bothering me though right now is we're not checking for none anywhere. All right, if I just take a look back here where we set this code up, weapon entity could be a none. And this would end up making it unwrap a none, which should crash. So we should check somewhere to see if weapon entity is anything is a sum oh i guess hmm 
I guess if there's no weapon info, then we should be okay. Well, let's run it and see what happens. This says this is pretty simple. It rolls a hundred sided die. That should be die for singular and uses fractional proc chance as a percentage chance of it taking place. If it does take place, it sets the effect target to the wielder or the target, depending on the proc effect, and then calls the add effect system to launch it. Remember to put dagger venom in your spawn table. Okay, well, let's see if this builds. It does not. In fact, I keep typing effect type time instead of effect type. There we go. Let's modify raws to add dagger of venom. Um, I guess we can just copy paste this thing here, right? Copied, pasted. All right, and the weight is high enough that we should be able to see it right away, which is good. Uh, let's build that. I'll take a quick sip of water. Very good. And then we'll go over here and refresh. I need a faster computer. There we go. Okay. So if I... Come on. Uh-oh. It's broken. There we go. So that must be one of the daggers. Let's make sure I'm in god mode. Let's do reveal here. Oh. What happened to the... There it is. I pick up the unidentified dagger. It's not showing up here. Okay, we're going to try wielding it. It's a dagger of venom. Let's find something else and attack it. Come on, bandit. Come to me. Okay, so I'm going to hit. So if I pointed him now, right, there's no proc effect on him. If I attack. Oh, I didn't hit. Oh, I hit the I hit the bandit. Why is it not? Okay, it didn't work, right? We should be seeing a damage over time effect on. Um, we should be seeing a damage over time effect on the bandit, and we weren't. I'm just looking for another creature to attack just to make sure it's not related to the bandit somehow. Of course, we don't see any. Let's go to the next level. Okay, so this goblin does not have a damage over time. And still does not. Okay, so... What do we mess up? Let's find out. Here's the dagger of venom. Here's the proc chance. We did apply the effects of the um, proc. And this is where, oh, because it doesn't, it's not going to happen every time. So let's put a little log message here in our uh, combat system. There's proc effects. So we'll just take a look. Uh, we'll just log this here. RLTK console log proc effect fires. Else, I'll put an else in here. And just say proc effect does not fire. Okay, that way we can see what's going on. And then I have to remember to take those out before I commit those changes. Tried and true method of printf debugging. Don't need that, don't need that. I guess we can clean up some 
Oh yeah, Wizard's Bane, I gotta check that out. And then this is the macro that Wizard wrote. Okay. Now let's see, let's go find a teleport, reveal. Let's go find a uh, dagger. Here's one. Um, we're gonna wield it or equip it and then attack the bandit. And I did not see message that I was hoping to see. Oh, proc effect fires. Okay. Yeah, damage over time. Okay, so that worked. It worked. I thought I would also see the um, this thing here if the RNG didn't work. Huh. But it worked, so that's the important thing. Okay, so let's uh, commit these changes. Right, if you cargo run now, you can find the dagger and sometimes you can poison your victim. Again, we've really shown off the power of the ECS messaging system here. With a little extension, our entire effect system also works for weapon procs. All right, so now we're gonna get to enemy spell casting. Okay. With the exception of magical weapons, which will benefit whomever swings them, the effect system is pretty asymmetrical right now. Mobs can't send most of those likes from monsters to use the same rules as the player. This is actually a low value objective in the Berlin interpretation we are attempting to implement. We won't attempt to make monsters use whatever items they may spawn with yet, yet, but we'll give them the ability to cast spells as special attacks. Let's give large spiders the ability to slow you in a web with the web spell we defined above. As usual, we'll start in the JSON file deciding what this should look like. Oh, I forgot to change this back to three. All right, so we have a large spider. Level two attributes, we got renderable, block style, vision range, movement, static, natural. Oh, and then we have this abilities thing here. Okay, so let's add that in. And it's just a list of abilities. Spell, web, chance is 0 0.2, range is 6.0. And the min range is 3.0. Okay, so that just added an ability to the spider. We don't use it yet, but this is the same large spider as before, but we've added an ability section listing that it has a 20% chance of deciding to make a web. We'll need to extend mob structs to support this. All right, just like we did with the other one. Um, Obstructs. Here we go. So now we need pub abilities. And we need to create a mob abilities struct. Okay, so this is just what we added to the JSON file. Let's make a new component to hold this data for monsters and anything else with special abilities. Okay, so we're gonna go over to components, create a new component. It's the same exact thing, pop chance F32. And then range. Come on, there we go. And then min range. Okay. Uh, and then special abilities, which is, oh, this is not a component. Okay. This is the component. All 
Okay, now we go to Raw's Raw Master and attach the component to the spawn named mob function. All right, before we do that, Nixflex, hi. All right, we gotta add this uh, component here, special abilities. There we go. And then just take a quick look for it. There it is. And we're gonna add it to the save load system. We go put it right here, special abilities. And there, okay. So now we go to raw master, right? We gotta go to spawn named mob. And we have to pull up the abilities list. Um, not sure it matters where it goes. And it's just called A for ability, I guess. Sure. For ability in ability list iter. A abilities push. EB with A. Okay. Um, we should create, create something on special ability that just takes this ability and, and does it, but that's all right. Um, rather than putting it in here. Now that we've created the component, we should give monsters a chance to use their newfound abilities. So the visible AI system can be can easily be modified for this. All right. So let's go take a look. There's the visible AI system. Oh, okay. My my turn, faction, position, map, wants to approach, wants to flee. A, entity, view shed, chasing. So now we're adding all of this. Use RLTK, random number generator. And we'll just throw these things in here, I guess. Um, the difference between expect and storage, um, I kind of worked out on my own. Um, things that are read storage are components. Things that are read expect or write expect are resources. So one of the things they don't say in ECS is that you also have resources. So I guess, should be, I guess it should be called ECSR. Or e -E -C -S? Rex. Yeah, it should be called a Rex system. Um, so we are in right storage, wants to cast spell. Read storage name. And read storage spell template. Alright, and then all these need to be up, added up here. So special abilities. Wants to cast spell, name, and spell template. Okay, and then we have to add them down here as well. After chasing, we have abilities, RNG, casting, names, and spells. All right, let's see if that builds, or checks anyway. Oop, wants to cast spell with a lowercase p.
Okay, we got eight warnings, but that's that's all right because we're not done yet. So we need to extend this system here. So what has it got already? We have this part here, if entity is not equal to player. So the question is, what are we doing? There's one trick here, find spell entity by name. Because we're inside a system, we can't just pass a world parameter. So I added an in-system version to RAW's RAW master. Okay. All right, so let's figure out where this goes, because we have reactions, we have flea, there's the loop for visible tile. That looks all the same. That looks all the same. We have reaction attack. Okay, so here's where we want to check to see if we have abilities and maybe use them. And then it says, if not done, then we do this. Okay, so this is what we do if we're not using an ability. If not done. So we need to shift all these over. There we go. Oh, that should match up with the done. That matches up with the done. Okay. Oops. So now we say if let sum Okay, so if the entity has abilities, let range is equal to RLTK distance L for us. And then it's gonna be reaction dot zero is I32 mod map dot width and reaction dot zero as i32 divided by map dot width right okay and then that's the range for ability in abilities abilities iter wow if range is greater than the equal to ability min range and range is less than equal to ability range and RNG roll dice one to hundred is greater than or equal to ability dot chance times one hundred point zero as I three two. Then, if we, if that's all true, then we're going to use our find spell entity by name. Spell is going to be find spell entity by name. Like that. And then the other one is target is some RLTK point new. We just, hmm. Can it just be the same point? I guess not. So that inserts that. Oh, we have to do an expect. Like that, and then done is true. This should be here, right? And then that's the end of that if, and the end of that for, and the end of that if. Wow, okay. Does this build? Of course not. Create raws. Oh, right, we don't have it. It doesn't exist yet, that's fine. And I misspelled distance alg. That's it. Okay, so let's add this to the RAWs in RAW Master. 
Where's our last pub fund? I'll put the pub funds all together. Find spell entity. That's a good place for it, right? Pub fund find spell entity by name. And then entities. And it returns an option entity. So after all this, the spiders better be able to cast that web. Entity, S name, and template. If name equals s name dot name, return some entity. So it's very similar to this, except we don't have the world. We have to just pull the, um, the data directly from the system. Okay, and I'll put a blink there, and that should be good. So it would be good maybe if this called this. Right? Other than having this code duplicated. Should we do that now? Oh wait. Let's get let's get let's go find a spider. A large spider. And see if the spider can slow us down by casting web on us. Um So we're just looking for the S glyph. In the limestone caverns. Okay, so let's build this. Um, while we're waiting, let's see if we can. Here's limestone caverns. Do we see any spiders around? I don't see spiders. Do we have to change the, the spawn for spiders? Actually, you know, in all my testing, I haven't seen any spiders. I wonder if there's a bug somewhere. Large spider. And let's see if we can find that. Large spider, that works. Level two. Um, weight is three, min depth is three, max depth is three. So it's only found in limestone caverns, right? This is level three. Or maybe it's, maybe it's next level down. Yeah. I don't see spiders anywhere. Let me change this to a um, min depth, max depth of, let's say five. Maybe having, let's say four. Maybe having them the same is causing a failure. Although, no, we're seeing bats. Bats are more common though. All right, let's leave it at three. Um, they are red. RGB here is red, so the red block style is true. Vision range six, movement static. Action carnivores. Just like the mangy wolf. All right, so. Hmm. Ashutosh Sai John says, what are you making? I am making a roguelike. I am making a roguelike following this rusty, rusty roguelike tutorial. Um, you can go to this URL here. I'll put it in the chat again. Um, if you want to follow along or start your own, it's a really good tutorial because it starts from scratch. It gives you all the basics uh, you need to learn Rust and to make a roguelike. So let's, um, let's go one more. Teleport. Come on. There we go. Reveal. So let's look for spiders again. 
There's the bat. Right? Cobalts, bandits, goblins. No spiders. Oh, there's one. All right. Oh, did you see that? It cast a web on me and now I'm slowed. Neat. It cast it again. Now I'm slow. I got two slowed effects. I'm double slowed. Oh, I, I'm trying to run away from it. It's doing it a lot. Okay. Um, maybe I need to uh, attack it back somehow. Oh, good. It didn't attack me. I'm hiding behind this. Oop. Yeah. Oh, I finally killed it. Okay. Wow, that was tough. That slowed me a lot. That was pretty neat. Um, okay, so that worked. Let's see. Get diff. What do we got? So, oh, well, let's... Yeah, we changed that there. So that's good. Um, and then we added the uh, effect. All right, so now we can just say git add raws and source. Git commit. Dash M. Uh, what do we got? We got uh, mobs can now cast spells as special abilities. How's that, huh? That's pretty neat. All right, that's going to wrap this stream up. Um, let's go... Okay, Enter the Dragon is the next... Isn't that a name of a film? Yeah, a 1973 film. Starring Bruce Lee, John Saxon, and Jim Kelly. How about that? And that's what we're going to do next uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to enter the dragon. All right, get push. Let's take a look at what we did today. Yep, so we added the poison potion, the haste slow potion. We added spell books for web and hate. Haste. Oh, I did, I did hate as well. It should have been haste. Um, we added the dagger of venoms to show how we can do weapon procs. And then we added mobs, um, mob abilities for casting spells. Um, and then tomorrow, we're going to go with Enter the Dragon. Okay, now that we have spells and more advanced item abilities, the player might just be able to survive the first layer of the Dwarven Fortress we built back in section 4.17. Yeah. That was all the way back here. Okay. Um, but tomorrow, let's start with this. Meanwhile, I'm going to um, wrap the stream up. I wish you all a great day, or a great rest of your day. And I will see you tomorrow, hopefully, with more rusting roguelike. All right. Take care.